Oh, you made it already? Am I late? No, I'm not late. Thanks for coming. We're here because this is a Japanese restaurant and we're going to meet some Japanese people and we're going to learn about Japanese food. Yes! I'm so excited! I made reservations already. Come on. Here is the chef in his kitchen. Let's watch as he makes sushi rolls. His skill is amazing. Hi. Hi. So you are the Japanese person. Hi. Hi. And this is your Japanese restaurant. Hi. Hi. Um, well, konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. What's your name? I'm Yuko-san. You're Yuko-san. I am Greg-san. Nice to meet you and thank you for helping us. So today, we're going to learn about Japanese food. Today, we will look at few types of food. Soup, sushi, noodles, tempura, steak, and drinks. Great! But Really, there are many more types of food. Japanese food is delicious and beautiful. Japanese food is delicious and beautiful. Great! Well, where do we start? Here. Here. Aha! This is miso soup. Mm. Miso soup is made with miso paste, bits of seaweed, and little pieces of tofu. Yuko-san, where does miso paste come from? Miso paste comes from soybeans and salt. Now, Yuko, I have heard that when Japanese people eat miso soup, they do not use a spoon. No spoon. Normally, we use chopstick when we eat miso soup. Wait a minute. You eat soup with chopsticks? Mm -hmm. Will you show us? Sure. Oh, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it? Is it good? Huh. Okay. Fantastic. Soup with no spoon. You go. What's next on the menu? Here. Here. Sushi. 
Sushi. Aha. Sushi is rice wrapped up in seaweed, and inside can be raw fish, vegetables, crab, just about anything you want. Sushi is dipped in soy sauce and wasabi. Wasabi is very spicy, huh? <clears throat> Yuko, why is wasabi green? Is it spoiled? No, it's not. Wasabi comes from green radish, so that color is natural. Oh, wasabi comes from green radish, and it's naturally that color. Hmm. Okay. What's next? Next, these two. Oh, noodles. We have big noodles and small noodles. What are the big noodles called? It's called udon. Udon. This is called soba. And soba. Big noodles are udon, and small noodles are soba. Now, which one has more calories? Hmm. Udon has more calories. And noodles can be eaten in soup or without soup. Can be eaten hot or enjoyed cold. What's next? Next, tempura. Tempura. Tempura is fresh vegetables or seafood or anything really that is put in batter and deep fried. Now, this is tempura sauce, yes? Yes. Is it the same as soy sauce? It's a little bit different. This is made with soy sauce and dried bonito. Mm, tempura sauce is made from soy sauce and dried bonito. What's next? Next, this one, Kobe beef. Kobe beef. Woo! This is very famous from Japan. Kobe beef is a special kind of beef that's been raised what in luxury. Yes. Hi. 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 And okay, and it's grilled on a hot plate with mushrooms, asparagus, and other vegetables. Very delicious and very expensive, huh? And the Kobe beef comes with a mayonnaise sauce, a spring onion with garlic sauce, and a carrot sauce. Mmm. You know, with all this food, I'm feeling kind of thirsty, Yuka. What's a good Japanese drink to go with the Japanese meal? Here we go. We have green tea, which can be enjoyed over ice or hot, and sake, which is rice wine, and you can enjoy that cold or warm. Wow, I'm really full. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Yuko-san. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Here are the raw ingredients for Kobe beef. Let's watch our chef's technique as he prepares the beef. Hi, welcome back. It's so nice to see you again. <laughs> well, the food is so good here, we just can't stay away. <laughs> I'll mention that to the chef. The service is fantastic. You are too kind, and I try my humble best. Do you know what you'd like to order? To tell you the truth, I'm not that hungry today. Would you like to hear about today's specials? What do you have in the way of small appetizers? We are having a Joyful Japan promotion today. Oh, really? 
I absolutely love Japanese food. Well, if you're not too hungry and just looking for a light snack, how about some udon? That sounds great. What is it? Udon is a kind of noodle. And what is the best udon you have? For you, I think the cold noodle. Saru soba. Okay, if you say so, I'll have that. And some gyoza? No, I'll pass. Are you ready to order yet, ma'am? No, I'm not. Let me look at the menu just a moment longer. Okay, I'll be right back with some water. What would you suggest for someone on a low-sodium, low-cholesterol diet? You're on a low-sodium, low-cholesterol diet? Uh, and that means? Low-sodium means I cannot eat too much salt. Low-cholesterol means I should eat food low in fat. I have a bad heart. I'm sorry to hear that, but I understand. You have to watch what you eat. What would you recommend? Do you have anything with fish? We do have a Japanese sushi set. It comes with miso soup, pickled vegetable salad, an assortment of sushi, and freshly sliced fruit as dessert. That will be okay. Low in salt and cholesterol, high in protein. Great. Um, let me have some rice wine, too. It is said a glass of wine is good for the heart. Anything for you to drink, sir? Mm, I'll just have water for now. Suwadikrap. That means hello in Thai. Thailand has a long tradition of exotic and colorful food, and Thai food is famous throughout the world for its flavors spicy, sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and especially spicy. <sighs> very hot, very hot. Let's see what else our cook made for us. Hmm. Oh, here we have pad thai. That's what I had for lunch. Pad thai is made from noodles, shrimps, bean sprouts, green onions, mm, peanuts. Pad thai is delicious and nutritious. Here we have minced pork with basil, and a fried egg, sunny side up. Here are the ingredients for minced pork and basil. Chili, garlic, broth, fish sauce, oil, oyster sauce, minced pork, and basil. Let's cook some food. Pour some oil into the pan, Let the oil get hot, then add the chilies and garlic. Stir the chilies and garlic, then add the minced pork. Stir fry the pork until it's brown. Then add oyster sauce, fish sauce, and broth. Don't forget the basil. And here we have 
แผ่นกระเพามู And here we have cow pat, fried rice. This is fried rice with shrimp. It can be made with pork, chicken, beef, anything really. Thai food is also famous for being eaten family style. Family style is when the food is in the center of the table and everybody shares it. Thai food is also usually eaten with a spoon and a fork. You take the fork and push the food onto the spoon and eat it. We do not need a knife when eating Thai food because all the food is cut up into small pieces before cooking. Let's look at some more food. Let's make tom yam, one of the most famous Thai dishes in the world. Here are the ingredients for tom yam kung. Galanga, lemongrass, chilies, kaffir lime leaves, shrimps, mushrooms, and cilantro. We'll also use lime juice, fish sauce, chili paste, and condensed milk. First, we boil broth in a pot and we add our galanga and lemongrass. Tear up some kaffir lime leaves. Don't forget your chilies. We put in some mushrooms as the soup continues to boil. Now for the shrimp. When the shrimp turn orange, we add fish sauce, chili paste, and condensed milk. Bring the tom yum back to a boil. Serve hot in a bowl. Garnish with lime juice and cilantro. Next to that is yamun sen, or bean noodle salad, which is made with peppers, pork. What else is in here? Ah, oh, tomatoes, some celery leaves. It's very spicy. Next. We have Geng Kyo Wan Gai, which is green curry with chicken. Green curry with chicken has chicken, coconut milk, curry paste, and sweet basil. Also, it has two kinds of fruit that don't have a common English name, but they're related to the eggplant. They're very small and quite bitter, but delicious. Next. We have som tam thai or papaya salad. Papaya salad is made from green papayas, peanuts, fresh chilies, dried shrimp, garlic, sugar, fish sauce, lime juice, and the little green beans. Som tam is eaten with sticky rice. To eat som tam, you can take sticky rice. Make it into a little ball and grab it with your fingers. Finger food. Mmm. Excuse me. Mmm. I cannot wait for lunch. Wow, that's really good. For dessert today, our chef made a plate of fresh fruit. Here we have red rose apple, watermelon. Green winter melon and ripe papaya, delicious. <sighs> wow, it looks all so good. Would you like to join me for lunch? Come on, come on. We'll take a little break and eat all this food now. Come on, don't be shy. Come on, come on. Good evening. How are you tonight? Better. 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 Tell us the specials right away. We're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our special tonight is Thai food. Oh, Thai food. 
I've never had Thai food before. Yes, please tell us. What's good? Well, the basic dish is fried rice. You can order fried rice with just about anything. Pork, squid, chicken, shrimp, whatever you like. What else is there? Well, there's pad thai. Pad thai is quite famous. And that's the fried noodles with egg and tofu and bean sprouts. A lot of people order that with shrimp. I like spicy food. Is Thai food spicy? Well, if you like spicy food, you'll love Thai food for sure. For you, I recommend the Pat Krapao Lat Khao. Mm, sounds exotic, but I don't get it. What is Pat Krapao? Pat Krapao Lat Khao is chicken, beef, or pork ground up with basil and hot chilies and garlic and spices all fried up and served over a bed of steaming rice. Mm -hmm. I'm drooling. I'll have that with chicken, please. I'll go for the fried rice with shrimp. Okay. that the Thais eat their meals communally. You heard right. If you want to eat in the true Thai style, you will have many dishes in the middle, and everybody shares the dishes with steamed rice. Oh, sharing. What a good idea. You could order the Gang Kia Wan, which is a green curry with chicken. What about soup? Oh, for soup, I could definitely recommend the Tom Yam Kung, which is a spicy sour soup with jumbo shrimp. Mm. What is a good vegetable dish? Good vegetable dish. Nam Prik. Nam Prik comes with an assortment of raw and steamed vegetables and a variety of Thai dipping sauces. Let's eat in the traditional Thai style, and we'll let the waiter order two or three dishes for us to share. Sounds good to me. Can you do that? But of course. Namaste. India is a huge country with an ancient history and diverse people and of course many different types of foods. When talking about Indian food it's difficult to know where to start or even when to stop. But we'll try. Let's see. Oh, Indian food is mostly vegetarian although there are many meat dishes to choose from. Let's start with an appetizer. Here we have samosas. Samosas are a deep fried pastry. What's inside a samosa? I don't know. Let's open them up and see. Just cut through this one here. And through this one here. This samosa has potatoes and spices in it. And this one has ground mutton. Mutton is the meat that comes from sheep. Bah! Here we have two different kinds of naan, which is Indian bread. We have an onion naan 
and a garlic naan. The breads are eaten with curries. Here we have our first curry. This is called kadai chole. This is made from green peas and potatoes and it's curry sauce. This is a vegetarian dish. Here we have a ghost vindaloo which is made from mutton. Mutton which comes from sheep and also potatoes and it's here we have what is this? Oh, it looks like a bay leaf and it's usually very spicy. If you like spicy food, you'll love the vindaloo. Mmm. And next, we have the alu mater. Alu mater is vegetarian. It has a mashed potato base. That's all on the inside. And then these, which are garbanzo beans, which are also called chickpeas. And then we have what, bell pepper over here and some tomatoes. This alu mater is also a vegetarian dish. And here we have tandoori chicken. Tandoori chicken gets its name from the special oven it's cooked in. And tandoori chicken gets its red color from the yogurt it's marinated in. It has different spices. And these are dipping sauces. We have a chutney sauce. This one is mango, although there are hundreds of different kinds of chutneys. And here we have a mint sauce. And next to this dipping sauces are pickled onions. Mmm. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to eat. Oh no! No forks, no knives, no spoons. What to do? No problem. Traditionally, Indian food is eaten with the bread. We will take a piece of garlic naan, pull a bit of the bread off, and then use this to eat the curry. Let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe, cut it, tell you, to Aha! Ah, I'll cheat. We'll try some vindaloo. Dip it in, grab a bit of potato, and then enjoy. Mmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. That was pretty good, but I'm still hungry. What's for dessert? Check it out. It's gulab jaman. What is that? It's fried milk balls. Really? 100% fried milk in a sugar syrup. Mmm. This is going to be good. Oh, let's cut one open and look inside. Isn't that something else? All milk and sugar syrup. Hi! Welcome back. It's always a pleasure to see our regular customers. Thank you. It's always wonderful to eat here. That's for sure. What's good today? I'm glad you asked. Today, we are featuring cuisine from India. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. ah. Indian food is noted for its curries and very flavorful spices. We don't eat Indian food very often. Not hardly enough. I suggest you start off the meal with mixed samosas. Mm. What's that? A samosa is a deep-fried pastry with a mixture of vegetable or meat. For the main course, perhaps some tandoori chicken with lamb kebabs. Tandoori chicken is cooked in a traditional clay oven. Kebab is meat on a stick cooked in that same oven. How do you know this? Hmm. Well, don't forget what like the Indian bread roti. And what kind of chutney do you have? Our chef makes a superb mango chutney. Oh. A relish made with vegetables, herbs, and fruit. 
Yes, we'll have the mango chutney. That will be all for now. You are amazing. How do you know so much about Indian food? <laughs> well, didn't you know? I spent a year traveling in India learning yoga. Wow. Hola, amigos. That's how you say hello, friends, in Mexico. Now, we're going to take a look at Mexican food. Mexico is a large country in Central America and has an ancient tradition of delicious food. Mexican food uses lots of meat, such as chicken, pork, fish, beef, and lots of dairy products, too, like cheese, butter, sour cream, and, and, also uses fresh chili peppers. So that means the food's very spicy. Yes! Yes! Let's get started. Here we have the tortilla. Tortilla is Mexican bread. Tortillas are made from flour or corn. This one is a corn tortilla. It's very important for the food that we are going to look at now. Let's have an appetizer. The basic appetizer is chips and dips. Here we have the chip. The chip is a fried corn tortilla. Very crispy. We can take the chip and put it in the dip. And then eat it. Mm. This is salsa fresca. Salsa fresca is made from tomatoes, onions, garlic, cilantro, peppers, of course, to make it very spicy. Mm. And here we have guacamole. Guacamole comes from avocado. And guacamole is made with garlic and cilantro and onion and peppers. Next, we have nachos. Nachos are baked in an oven. It uses corn chips, cheese, beans, jalapeno peppers, <sighs> sour cream, and sometimes chicken or beef. But this one is vegetarian. Those are some common appetizers. Let's look at some entrees. Here we have burritos. This is a beef burrito. It's wrapped up in the flour tortilla. Inside, they have beef, lettuce, salsa, sour cream, cheese, and on top, covered with melted cheese, some guacamole, sour cream, jalapeno pepper, and some cilantro. This comes with a side dish of rice and beans, which are also very common with Mexican food. And here we have a taco. Taco is very popular. On the outside, it has the crispy shell of a corn tortilla. Let's see what's on the inside. On the inside we have chicken, corn, potato, lettuce, cheese, salsa, cilantro, and guacamole. Let's make some guacamole. I'll show you a very easy recipe that my mother taught to me. First, you take your avocado and cut it in half. Then, you can remove the seed and then scoop out the avocado using a spoon. This is easier than peeling the avocado. That's one. And then scoop out the second half into your bowl like that. Mm. And then we add some garlic and some onions. How much do you put in? Up to you. If you like it garlicky or oniony, put in a lot. If you like just a little bit, 
put in a little bit. Mmm, I like it garlicky. Next, we put in some tomatoes. Tomatoes add a nice color to the guacamole. Red and green. Mmm. Next, we put in some cilantro. Mmm. As much as you like. That's what makes this recipe so easy. Next, we can put in some lemon. Mm. If you cannot find lemon, it's okay to substitute with lime. I like to put in a lot because lemon is delicious. Makes it nice and sour. That's two for me. All right, <clears throat> and finally, just a little bit of ground black pepper. Bop, bop, bop. Mm, enough. Next, we take our fork and mash it all up together. You don't have to stir it, but just press it, mash it into lumps, and mix it up a little bit as well. You can see that the avocado has a very soft flesh. It mixes up very easily. Now, you can mash it up and mix it up as much as you want. It's up to you. Some people like guacamole kind of chunky and thick, but other people like it super smooth, creamy. I like mine kind of thick. There you go. Guacamole, just like mom used to make. You can let it sit for a while to let the flavors mix and meld together for more full taste. But you know what? Looks kind of good. I think I'll dig in right now. Take my corn chip. This is just to test to make sure it's delicious. Mm. And bon appetit. Mm. Guacamole, just like mom used to make. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. Hello, are you ready to order yet? Yes, we are. I'll have the number two set lunch with a chicken burrito and a pork taco. Would you like mild, medium, or a hot salsa with that? Mild, please. Also, I am lactose intolerant. The restrooms are over there. No, I am lactose intolerant. It means I cannot digest dairy foods. It gives me diarrhea. What kind of dairy foods are you talking about? All dairy products. I cannot eat cheese, butter, milk, cream, sour cream, ice cream, nothing at all with milk. Okay, I'll tell the chef, no dairy for you. How about you, madam? Do you have any special diets? Actually, yes. I'm allergic to seafood. My goodness! How about pork, beef, or chicken? Those are fine. In fact, I'll have the number three. Two tacos, one beef, one chicken with a side of rice and beans. Would you like some nachos with that? Nothing dairy for me. Chips and salsa? Yes, with mild salsa. Anything for you folks to drink? I'll have a Coke. Seven up for me, and a glass of water. A glass of water for me, too. Okay. I'll be right back with your order. Ciao! 
That's how they say hello in Italy. Italy is a country in Europe, and Europe has many countries with fantastic food. There's Greek food, French food, Scandinavian food, Mediterranean food. So how can we pick just one? You have to ask the chef. And here we have pizza. Pizza is best enjoyed with friends. Or, if you want, you can eat a whole one all by yourself. Up to you. Here, we have a pepperoni pizza with vegetables. You can see at the bottom we have the piece of bread. On top of that is a tomato sauce, not ketchup. And on top of that, we have cheese with some olives, bell peppers, and onions. And there you go, a simple pepperoni pizza. If that's not enough, we have soup. Here we have a minestrone soup. Minestrone soup comes from tomatoes and also has vegetables. Corn, onions, what else? Some pasta, beans. Minestrone soup is one of the most common and famous soups for Italian food. Here we have garlic bread. Garlic bread, or any kind of bread, is very important for the Italian meal. It's eaten with appetizers, eaten with soups, eaten with salads, eaten with the entrees. Bread is used with every part of the meal, except dessert. Mm. Speaking of salad, did you know that not every salad uses lettuce? It's true. Let's take a look at this one. Here we have ensalada caprese. This is a salad that uses thinly sliced pieces of mozzarella cheese with fresh tomatoes and sun-dried tomatoes, as well as thinly sliced red onion. Hmm, no lettuce at all. But we still use a salad dressing. And here we have an oil and vinegar dressing. Mm. After the appetizers, we can have the entrees. The most famous entree of them all is spaghetti. Spaghetti is a kind of pasta which has a tomato sauce, not ketchup, a tomato sauce based with ground beef. It's that simple. Spaghetti, tomato sauce with ground beef. But spaghetti is kind of difficult to eat, so I'm going to show you a trick on how to eat spaghetti without getting it all over yourself. First, take your spoon and your fork. Put your spoon into the spaghetti and with your fork, go ahead and just get it right in there and you spin, spin, spin the spaghetti. All the way around until you have just enough to eat. Mmm, I'm going to eat later. Next, we have another kind of pasta called ravioli. Ravioli is a pasta shell with something in the middle. This kind of ravioli is spinach ravioli and a carbonara cream sauce. What's inside? Let's take a look. Get your knife, your fork, and go. It's filled with spinach and cheese. That's why it's called spinach ravioli. If, after you've eaten your big Italian meal and you're still hungry, you can have dessert. And tonight, I recommend the lemon pie. Here, we have the pie, which is made from lemon. That's why they call it lemon pie. Have you decided what you'd like to order? 
I'll try the chef's special, spaghetti carbonara. That's with cream sauce, right? Yes. Excellent choice. The spaghetti carbonara comes with your choice of soup or salad. What is the soup of the day? Minestrone. And what is the salad? We have Caesar salad, garden salad, or spinach salad. I'll have the soup and Caesar salad. Okay. Anything else? No, that will do it for me. And for you? Do you have anything vegetarian? Yes, we have a spinach ravioli and spaghetti and a tomato sauce. I'll have the ravioli and a Caesar salad and some garlic bread too. Of course. Would you like some wine? Certainly. Waiter, please bring us a bottle of your finest red wine as well. Certainly. I'll be right back. Excuse me, ma'am. The chef has just informed me that we're out of the vegetarian spinach ravioli. Would you care for something else? Perhaps the spaghetti with tomato vegetarian sauce? Yes, that will be fine. Very good. Hi there. Hi. What can I get for you? Uh, can I have a bottle of beer, please? Sure. Would you like import or domestic? Import. Would you like a glass with that? Is that a chilled glass? You bet. Thanks. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. How about those eleven? Hi there. So you'd like to learn more about beverages and my job? Great and welcome. Basically, there are two types of beverages. There's alcoholic <laughs> and non-alcoholic beverages. Alcoholic drinks come in three categories. Alcoholic drinks include beer, wine, and liquors or spirits. Beers in bars and restaurants usually comes in bottles or in draft beer. Bottled beers are open with a bottle opener. Draft beers come from a tap. You pull the tap and fill up the glass or the jug, whatever the customer orders. Let's pour a beer. To pour a beer, you take a clean glass. Open the beer, hold the glass at a slight angle, and pour the beer. You want to have a little bit of foam. Foam is called head on top of the beer. About two fingers worth of foam or head is fine. Wine is an alcoholic beverage. Wine is complex and has a long history, but today we're going to keep it simple.
There are two basic kinds of wine, red wine and white wine. Red wine is best served at room temperature. This bottle has a cork. We will have to open it with a corkscrew. White wine is best served chilled. This bottle is called a carafe and can be opened just with your hands. Remember, when chilling white wine, always put the wine in the ice. Don't put ice in the wine. Wine is served in a wine glass. Make sure the glass is clean. You can hold the glass by the stem to avoid fingerprints. When we pour wine, fill the glass about three quarters full, not to the top. Mmm, lovely. Finally, we have liquors, also known as spirits. They are strong. Watch out. If you drink too much, you will get drunk. There are many types of liquors or spirits. Some common liquors or spirits include gin, rum, whiskey, Tequila, vodka, and many more. Spirits or liquors can be enjoyed straight. This is a shot glass. And this is a shot of whiskey. Sometimes people will order whiskey on the rocks. On the rocks means with ice. This is a lowball glass. Take the shot of whiskey and pour it over the rocks. And now we have whiskey on the rocks. More often, spirits or liquor are mixed with something else to form a mixed drink or a cocktail. Some common mixers include soft drinks, tonic water, soda water, fruit juice, or just about any kind of liquid. Some famous mixed drinks are rum and coke, gin and tonic, and hmm, screwdriver. Let's make a screwdriver. First, we take a clean highball glass, fill it two-thirds the way with ice. Don't forget to use your ice tongs. Next, we pour in a measure or shot of vodka. This is a jigger. It measures one shot of vodka. Next, we add our orange juice. Stir with the stirrer, add your garnish, 
a straw, and cheers, a screwdriver. Mmm. There are also non-alcoholic drinks, which include soft drinks, fruit juices, vegetable juices, water, mixed drinks and cocktails with no alcohol, called virgin drinks, and many different kinds of coffee. Let's take a look at some important equipment every bar should have. Shaker. Jigger. Corkscrew. Bottle opener. Stirrer. Pilsner glass. Shot glass. Highball glass. Lowball glass. Wine glass. Oh, excuse me. My customer has come back. I have to go now. Hi, what can I get for you? Uh, can I have a beer, please? A beer again, huh? Again. Okay, same as before, right? Same as before. All 